In this video, I'll give you a brief overview of the Volse's assignment tool, when you might want to use it, and how to use it. When students log into Volse's, they'll automatically have access to everything in the table of contents, except for those activities that are marked by an apple, which indicates that they're teacher only. Students would only see activities in these sections or activities themselves that have the apple if you use the Vosay's assignment tool to assign them. You can also control what content the students have access to by hiding content by adding the apple icon to it using the Vosay's editor. You can see videos in our Vosay's editor series that go into more detail about how to do that. You can assign any page within Vosay's and you would start by opening the assignment tool. It's this piece of paper with the star on it. This is also where students would go to access their assignment calendar. Here on the assignments tab, we'll see all of the assignment folders, as well as any assignments that are listed not inside of a folder. From here, we would be able to edit the assignment and change the details for specific classes or specific students. We can also disable the assignment, which would then allow us to delete the assignment. We can also here create a new assignment. Here in the upper left, we would click the button that says create a new assignment, which then allows us to choose which page or pages to assign. Current page will assign the page we had open when we clicked the assignment icon and different pages will open the entire curriculum and allow you to choose a page or pages from anywhere within that particular book. So here I could choose unit five, maybe story three, and I can choose the vocabulary and then a couple of activity pages as well. It's important to note there are three main page types within Voces. There are pages with no student input, such as stories or vocabulary pages. There are recording activities where students are recording their response to a prompt or question. And then there are standard activities. These are any activities like matching, multiple choice, any activity with student input that is not the student recording their voice. These three page types have different options that you can apply. And we do have another video in this series that covers all of those options in more detail. For now, we'll go ahead and click Use Selected Pages, which would then give us the option of putting those assignments in a folder or leaving them outside of a folder. We can use folders to organize activities, to require that content be done in a certain order, um, or just for organization. It's totally up to the teacher if you want to add your assignments into folders, and we do have another video that goes over the specifics of folders. The next step will set the start and end date. This start date would tell us when the students are able to start working on the assignment. Available immediately would open it right when we create the assignment, whereas setting a future start date would restrict the students from beginning the activity until that day and time. You can then check this box so that the students can see the assignment on their calendar. They still won't be able to work on it until that date and time. Next, we'll be able to choose a due date. We can leave it with no due date, or we can choose a specific day and time when the assignment is due. If we do set a due date, we can then set how strict that due date is by choosing a hard deadline, which would accept no late submissions, a soft deadline, which would accept a submission one time after the due date, and only if it is the student's first attempt. This restricts students from resubmitting an assignment after the due date. The final option is open-ended, which would allow resubmissions after the due date. So this would allow you to uh, assign an activity with a specific due date, but then allow students to go back and correct their answers after that due date. Click Use Selected Dates to move on to the next step. This is the step that will look a little bit different for different page types. Um, there's just different parameters you can set, things like a submission limit or preventing students from leaving the page. And we do, again, have another more detailed video in this series about the assignment parameters and how they would all interact with each other. Once you're happy with your settings here, 
click Finish Selecting Additional Options to move on to Class Selection. On this screen, we'll choose either a full class or we can choose specific students from a class. That would assign it just to those two students and not to the other three students in that fourth hour class. Finally, click Finish Selecting Classes and we're now on the final step. Here we can leave notes for the students if we'd like them to have any additional information about the assignment. It's completely up to you again as the teacher. This is also where we would be able to sync that assignment to the LMS. So if we were using Google Classroom, Schoology, any of those programs, we would see that option here on the final step. Once you're happy here, go ahead and click Create Assignment, which will take us back to the assignment list. Here we'll be able to see those activities that we assigned under assignments without a folder because we didn't add them to a folder. Now the students will be able to open that same icon, the paper with the star, and see those activities assigned to them on the calendar. Of course, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us using any of the options under the question mark icon within your account.